What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here. We are looking at the US debt clock and I want to show you some new things and some bizarre things that I noticed surrounding silver on this website. Let's get into it. Buy your gold and silver online from SD Bullion. New customers get gold or silver at spot by visiting sdbullion.com slash new. Thank you so much for watching. I do sincerely appreciate it. Now, if you're not familiar with this website, usdebtclock.org, they also have an app you can get on your phone. But the main thing that this website does is it talks about the US national debt. You can see up here on the top left, the US national debt is now over $34 trillion, which is absolutely insane. When I was born, the US national debt was right around $3.4 trillion. So in my lifetime, it has gone up 10 x which is pretty crazy to think about the debt per citizen is over a hundred thousand dollars now so to break this down even further for me and my family i have myself my wife and our three boys so for me to pay back my family's portion of the u.s national debt we're looking at over half a million dollars that is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous uh, this is getting out of control it is growing at what seems to be an exponential rate and eventually this whole system is going to collapse it's going to implode and at that point i would not want to be holding dollars or paper assets of any kind now they actually do allow you to fast forward and see their prediction for 2028 you could see they're predicting 46 trillion dollars in just the next four years which is pretty insane so could this keep climbing higher and higher at an exponential rate from here yeah it certainly could um it will be insane to see when this eventually goes over a hundred trillion dollars if you know the whole system isn't broken at that point but uh i'll definitely keep an eye on this and keep you updated as it progresses over the months and over the years and whenever we hit any big milestones now they do talk about gold and silver on this website and they've updated it they've added a few things since my last video so the first thing i want to point out right here is the dollar to silver ratio now it says zero dollars per ounce now this is the year over year increase in the us m2 money supply divided by the yearly world production of silver in ounces so in other words this is how many ounces of silver have been mined as a ratio compared to how many dollars have been created now when we look at the dollar supply for this year we can see it is negative 712 billion dollars so if this number is negative the ratio is always going to be zero they could mine one ounce of silver or they can mine a billion ounces of silver the ratio is going to be zero because no dollars have been created so far this year. But one thing that they have added is the dollar to silver ratio uh, for 10 years. So this is the 10 year average of the yearly increase in the US M2 money supply divided by the yearly world production of silver in ounces. So this is the average over the last 10 years. Essentially, for every ounce of silver mined in the last decade, they have created $1,124. That is pretty crazy. But just over the last five years, if we look at that as a ratio, we can see $1,562. Now, this is not saying that silver should be $1,562 per ounce. This is just saying how many dollars have been created as a ratio to how many ounces of silver have been mined. But it is interesting to note that if we look at the 10 year, the number is lower than the five year. And to be honest, this year and last year, and maybe even the year before, because they were fighting inflation, the dollar supply has been going down. So most of this is due to COVID. I mean, there was a lot of currency created during COVID. You remember the bailouts, the stimulus checks, all that kind of stuff. So this number here is pretty high. I mean, it's a pretty crazy number to think about. And if we go all the way back to 1913, this is when the Fed was created, the dollar to silver ratio, $2.67 per ounce, right? So it was really close. It was almost like for every ounce of silver mined, there was, well, $2.67 per 
in dollars created. So it's much more reasonable. They weren't making currency at such a crazy rate compared to how many ounces of real money they were pulling out of the ground. So over the years, we expect to see this number continue to go higher and higher as currency gets created at a faster rate and we see more and more inflation. Now, if we look at gold, we can see it's very similar to that of silver. Uh, right now, $0 per ounce, but on the 10 year, we can see $9,350 and for five years we see $12,628. So again, over the last five years, more currency being created than compared to the last 10 years and going all the way back to 1913, $28.77 per ounce. So really insane to see these numbers change and to see them add these uh, averages for the last five and 10 years. This is new. I have not seen this before. I don't know if they added it in the last few months. I don't think I made a video talking about this website for a while, but it's really cool to see those numbers up there. Now, perhaps one of the most bizarre things that they show on this website is the paper to silver ratio and the paper to gold ratio. Now for silver, what does this exactly mean? Well, it is the number of paper silver ounces. Paper is in quotations. You can't see me doing it, but I'm doing the air quotes. Paper silver ounces. These aren't real silver. This is paper silver traded on the major world silver exchanges divided by the actual world production of silver in ounces. So for this year, 2024, we're seeing one ounce of real silver get mined out of the ground and 390 ounces, again in air quotes, of paper silver being traded. So this is ridiculous. This is what I point to when we think about manipulation. Is silver price being manipulated? Is gold price being manipulated? Yes, people have gone to jail over doing this, but silver at a much higher rate than gold. I mean, it's almost four times as high. So should silver price be four times higher than it is right now to catch up to gold, right? I don't know. I don't think it's exactly saying that, but I do think this number should be much, much lower. If it were one to one, that would mean no ETFs, no futures market for silver. That would mean if you wanted to invest in silver, you would actually have to buy a physical ounce, no paper products at all. If it were one to one, I think that's a little absurd because we do need the futures market. I mean, silver is a commodity. It's used a lot in industry. So to have no futures market at all, I mean, that seems a little ridiculous to me. I mean, the world that we live in right now is different than the world we lived in 100 years ago. Uh, so if we allow, let's say, maybe 10 to 1 or 50 to 1 for the futures market, we take away the ETFs then this is going to be a much more reasonable number and we probably would see the price of physical silver climb much higher because those who wanted to invest in silver would simply have to buy the physical ounces right and i think that's what you should be doing anyway i don't think you should be investing in these paper silver products because if the system does come crashing down you're left with nothing all you have is a coupon all you have is a number on a computer screen you don't have anything tangible to hold on to and when it comes to precious metals if you can't hold it well you don't own it right that's the saying so uh, I always like to look at these numbers when we think about manipulation of silver price and that of gold price as well. And uh, I think it's still out of hand. It's certainly not uh, gotten any better over the years. So there you go. That was some updates on the U.S. debt clock and some of the changes we've seen regarding silver. If you have any thoughts on these, definitely put them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next one. Silver Dragons out.